respecting everyone's time, and then uh, for those folks who have not yet joined, hopefully they'll be able to join us uh, in a few uh, minutes. Um, but uh, before we get underway, I just wanted to, to quickly introduce myself um, and welcome everyone to this webinar. Uh, my name is Brent Stewart. I'm a manager here of supplier diversity here at the NGLTC. Um, and we're so excited uh, and honored that you're able to join us today for Reputation Management, a guide to evaluating, addressing, and building your brand in the media. We are joined by three colleagues and two certified LGBT business enterprises, or LGBTBEs. One is Luna Plus and Asenla Media out of Washington, D.C., and the other is Renew PR and uh, I can certainly give an introduction, but I think it'd be much easier if they uh, introduced themselves. Uh, so, Brad, Chris, and Ben, would you like to go ahead and give uh, introductions? Absolutely. Thank you, Brent. Um, before we jump into introductions, we just want to take a moment to thank you and the entire team at NGLCC um, for organizing today's webinar and inviting us to uh, to present. As Brent said, we're proud to be LGBT certified businesses and members of the NGLCC um, family. And also want to thank all of the business owners on the phone with us for today's webinar. Uh, I'll have to say that I think um, Chris and Ben would agree that collaborating and sharing ideas along with other entrepreneurs um, is one of the best things about being a small business owner. So we hope uh, today's presentation gives you at least a couple of things to think about and perhaps even a few action items to help you grow your business's brand by utilizing the media. As I said, I'm joined on the phone today uh, by two other colleagues, uh, my business partner, Christopher Eisenla and also Ben Fenzel of uh, Renew PR. Chris and I collaborate uh, often with Ben on projects and presentations such as this. We believe in bringing smart people to the table to help deliver results for our clients, and Ben is certainly one of the best in the business. Uh, so today, the three of us are going to walk you through uh, the present you see on your computer screens and each talk about one of the buckets outlined uh, in this overview slide. Okay, so before we, di before oh, we dive in, let me introduce myself and then turn it over to Chris and Ben to give you a brief introduction of their backgrounds. My name is Brad Luna, and I'm one of the co-founders of Luna Eisenlaw Media. Uh, as Brent said, we're a strategic media and communications firm located both in Washington, D.C. and Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I've been working to help nonprofits, businesses, associations, and other organizations raise their profile in the media for over 15 years. For the first third of that time, um, I was in democratic politics, helping elect members of Congress and running top tier political campaigns. And I also spent several years on Capitol Hill as a communications director for a member of Congress. The middle third of my career was spent as communications director of the Human Rights Campaign, and as most of you probably know on the phone today, HRC is the largest LGBT civil rights organization in the country. And the last third, the current third, uh, I've spent uh, my career being a small business owner, helping nonprofits ranging from LGBT organizations to small business groups, colleges and universities associations, and other professional organizations raise their profile and build their brands through strategic media outreach and development. Uh, so that's a little bit about my background. I'm going to turn it over to Chris uh, to introduce himself. Thanks, Brad. Um, for everyone that's on the call, I have a similar trajectory of working in Democratic campaigns, um, Capitol Hill um, and Off the Hill. Um, Several years ago, I spent time on a presidential campaign as well as a senatorial campaign with Brad, in fact. 
And my experience kind of um, ranges from working with members of Congress to nonprofit organizations, for-profit companies, um, uh, government entities. Uh, from campaigns, I went to working on Capitol Hill for two senior members of Congress, um, helping advance their policy and political goals. Um, once leaving the Hill, moving to a mid-sized firm where I worked with um, Ben, uh, working with um, major CEOs to uh, government entities, to helping them with message strategy and amplifying uh, their goals. Um, we did some great stuff up there and really lend it um, experience to uh, starting a firm uh, with Brad Luna. So with that, I'll turn it over to um, Mr. Finzel. Thanks, Chris, and thanks, Brad, for those kind words. Uh, my name is Ben Finzel. I'm a native Washingtonian. I'm a former health staffer and presidential appointee, and I was a PR executive at five global, national, and boutique firms. I'm a member of the Victory Campaign Board of the Gay and Lesbian Victory Fund and the former head um, and founder of FH Upfront, which was the first global LGBT communications practice at a global PR firm. I started Renew PR, renewpr.com, if you want to check it out, in January of this year, and I received my NGLCC LGBT uh, business enterprise certification in June, which was very exciting. I have it on my website. Uh, Renew PR is a communications consulting firm, and we're focused on energy and environment topics for the most part, although we do a fair amount of LGBT work as well. And we work with corporate, nonprofit, and foundation clients in D.C. and around the nation. And we're focused on four key activities, strategy, messaging, media, and partnerships. And as Brad mentioned, we work regularly with Luna, with uh, Luna Eisenla Media. In fact, um, the firm is one of our network partners, and we're really happy to be conducting this webinar with them today. So with that, um, we'll get started, and um, we tried to be very um, specific here in terms of giving everyone some really good points of view to start from and thoughts to think about. So um, it really is a, a sort of a three-part um, dialogue or discussion, as Brad mentioned, and I'm doing the first part, which is the uh, evaluation part. So this really is about um, thinking about um, what your brand is in the media as you get started, so before you sort of embark on a campaign or start sending press releases out willy-nilly, really thinking about evaluating where your brand is and where you want it to go. And um, again, for sort of the rule of threes here, we like to do that a lot. Uh, we gave you three A's, audit, assess, and align. So starting with audit, um, that sounds, I know, particularly in, in, in our world, in the small business world, audit is not necessarily a good word. Um, <laughs> it brings to mind, you know, what did my accountant not tell me? What did I mess up? That's not what we're talking about here. What we're really thinking about here is really understanding um, what your current brand recognition and identity is in the marketplace. Do your target audiences know who you are? What do they know about you? And is what they know about you accurate and really what you want them to know about you? And that's really um, an important place to start. You've got to acknowledge this is not, you know, at the start when you're in the evaluation phase, this is not about what you want it to be, but it's really about what it actually is. And those two things may not be the same. Um, and that might be a reason for you to think about embarking on a campaign if you want to actually change the perception that people have of you. So how do you do that? So the first part is really to consider what you've done to date. What kinds of proactive and in some cases reactive activities have you undertaken to build your brand in the media? What are the sort of things you've done have you um, consciously built your reputation in the media by seeking out opportunities to comment on relevant business or other stories? Have you tried to engage reporters, um, not just when you need them, but when you don't? And what I mean by that is, you know, talking to reporters and asking them the kinds of things they're covering or the kinds of business stories that they think are interesting or the kinds of business leaders that they find most compelling to quote in a story. And then you also need to think about um, how you may have unconsciously affected your reputation in the media. So, for example, have you avoided follow-up when media try to engage you? Oh, I just don't have time, or gosh, I, I don't want to talk to a reporter. That seems scary. Um, or have you missed opportunities where you might promote yourself uh, and your company? And those kinds of thoughts are, are sort of a good starting point. And some of the ways you might want to do that, in addition to just sort of looking back at, at what you've done in the recent past, Ask clients, customers, friends, past clients for their opinions. You know, what do you think my reputation is? What, you know, do you think that's accurate? Are there thoughts you have about things you think I should be doing? You can also talk to reporters to gauge their opinions and gather insight. And that's a great way to engage a reporter, not just when you need them, but when you don't. Because it's really not about pitching a story, but really about having a conversation with them and trying to understand 
from their perspective, how you might be useful to them. So once you've audited um, your, your current sort of status, then you need to assess your goals and establish really what success means for you. And your goal should be where you want to go over time. And you should recognize that it might take you some time to get there. I mean, you know, that's why we call it a goal. <laughs> um, and the other piece of that is that how you define success should be really realistic and appropriate to your business. So, for example, being included in a story or getting a call from a reporter at the Wall Street Journal isn't necessarily right for everyone. If that's not what your business was predicated on, it's not necessarily going to help you. So when I talk about um, strategy with clients, I mentioned before that one of the four areas we focus on is strategy. I talk a lot about developing an approach that is based on truth, and that is what is true to you and who you are and what you want to accomplish. So, for example, um, when I'm working with an energy client to help them build their corporate reputation, I ask who their audiences are and what they're trying to accomplish in developing or enhancing or revising or changing a communication strategy. So if their audiences are venture capitalists and political leaders, I might focus more on engaging trade or business media than if their audiences are, for example, potential customers, which might indicate a different kind of focus and a different kind of messaging. And when I'm thinking through reputation programs for nonprofits, I consider what the group does and how they engage with different audiences or how they don't engage and how they might want to use media coverage to build their reputation. So if they talk with funders in one way and partners in another, I'll consider how best to engage in media outreach to support both of those efforts. So if you're thinking about goals, they should be both ambitious and achievable. You want to push yourself, but not so much that you set yourself up for failure. That's, you know, not a good thing. So one way to do that is to think about building your goals around a series of steps that you can sort of build on cumulatively, cumulatively over time, and then you can measure your progress against those steps. So when I'm working with clients who are really trying to think about building their reputation in the media for the first time or for the first time in a while, I often suggest first looking at trade or business media as a target and then building out to talk to your outlets as they make sense for their business. And this way, they, they, if that makes sense for their business, they can work with reporters that are more interested in what they're doing and work up to the more broad brush or, or big ticket or, you know, big, big picture focused um, media that might only be uh, interested in, in one piece of their business and might not be so interested in the broader story they're trying to tell. And as we do that, um, we measure success, for example, by looking at how many types of relevant engagements we've had and what has resulted from those engagements. So you can start to sort of build a measurement um, pattern. And then the last step here in, in this evaluation stage is really aligning um, a program. So once you sort of assess your goals, aligning a program and really thinking as we have here, um, about media specifically and how you can leverage media for your benefit. Um, and you have to be really realistic about that. It's great to get media coverage, but um, it's not always the most useful thing in building a business. So you have to think about the best way to use it. So the proper way to think about aligning um, a program is really beginning with an understanding of, about what you're trying to accomplish and the best way to do that. So if you're selling a product to consumers and your, your principal audience is consumers, um, a story in the local newspaper or on local uh, broadcast television might be a really good thing. But if you're selling a product to other businesses, then a story in a trade or a business newsletter might actually make more sense because that actually gets to where your target audience is. So it's all about focus and targeting and only thinking about how to align that. From there, you have to start engaging and you have to think about media engagement, as a, again, as a cumulative tool. Build on one conversation to get another, leverage one outlet to interest another in talking with you, and build out that currency, as we said. And once you have amassed a bit of currency in the form of media coverage, you need to think about how best to get the most use out of it. So you, for example, can use media coverage as a way to introduce yourself to potential new customers, potential new clients. You can promote the coverage you get in social media and think about ways to use that coverage to demonstrate and highlight your credibility as a business and as a business leader. And once you've aligned your program, then it's all about focusing on execution. Because the, the challenge here is once you started, you can't really stop unless you want to have to start the process all over again. So Brad's going to talk a bit about how you can start to do that by putting the building blocks in place. Thank you very much, Ben. Um, that was very interesting. And as you said, now that you've sort of gotten past the place of 
kind of the big picture, where you want to go um, as a business, where your brand currently stands and where you would like to see that trajectory go. Uh, the next step is sort of putting some fundamental building blocks in place, so sort of drilling down and getting a little, more, little bit more granular on tactics and ways that you may be able to um, – to uh, do some work inside the house before you start going externally. And on that, one of the most common mistakes we see with clients um, and others that are beginning their media outreach program is really to prematurely start conducting outreach to reporters and media contacts before um, they've really got their house in order. And uh, so what do I mean by getting your house in order? Uh, getting your house in order is about creating a checklist of necessary communications resources and making sure they're established and up-to-date. So communications resources, we sort of think of broadly as, you know, items you'll need to effectively communicate your message to the media and represent your business in a professional manner. Um, you want to make sure you have those things in place uh, before you start before you start outreach to reporters. So sort of one of the, the, the main kind of beginning blocks that we, uh, we start on with our clients a lot of times because – uh, typically they already sort of have this developed is an assessment of their online presence. So it's those online platforms that are already potentially communicating a message to the public. Uh, when you send out a press release or you do media outreach to a reporter, it has been our experience over years that sort of the first place they turn to is A, to your website, um, and then B, to Google to uh, to find out what's being said about you um, already, about your business um, in general, and then about key spokespeople that are associated with your business. So before you start to uh, conduct outreach to reporters, you kind of want to do a little bit of a um, uh, an audit of yourself, as Ben said, and see what, what's being said out there online about you. Uh, what does your website look like? Uh, what does Google have to say about you? What does Google have to say about the principles in your in your organization? So some of the initial questions that you may want to ask yourself is, and I know this sounds in 2015 um, an odd question, but you would be surprised. Number one is, do you have a website? <laughs> is Do you have an online presence? Um, and if so, is that online presence up to date? Uh, one of the sort of initial things we see with, with folks a lot of times is they'll have a website, but the spokesperson may not have a bio on that website. Or if they do have a bio, it's two or three um, positions ago. So uh, the person who was a program director who's now the CEO uh, of the organization may still have a bio on their website that has them as the program director. So before you do outreach, you want to make sure – your bio and your messaging is consistent. Um, and then also have a high-res photo of that spokesperson on the website. Uh, the other thing is on social media accounts, which are obviously a very popular way of, uh, of communicating these days, one of, the, one of the main things we see with folks is, you know, are those social media accounts seeded with content? Uh, so you have a presence on Facebook or you may have a Twitter account, but do they actually have content that, content that's being generated on those accounts and as a content up to date a lot of times when we come on board with a new client they may have a space on their website for recent news um, and their recent news is a, a press release from two or three years ago so you want to make sure that uh, before you start that outreach that you've seeded those online platforms with content that's up to date um, and is current and is making sure that you're communicating a brand for your business um, that you want you want media to be a, paying attention to and accurately reflect what you're uh, what you're trying to communicate. So after looking at sort of your online and social media presence, the next thing uh, we do with clients that we would suggest is developing your top line or key messages. So in other words, do you have a clear idea of what you want to communicate to a reporter? And this you know, you may have specific sort of uh, business-wide kind of messaging you want to communicate, but also depending on the reporter and depending on the story, this may require different messages. And let me give you an example of that that may be relevant uh, to this audience, uh, especially with NGLCC's uh, relationship with the Democratic Convention. So if you're a business trying to communicate about your company to the local Philadelphia media, um, to try to build stakeholder visibility leading up to next year's Democratic Convention. You want to reach the folks who are making the decisions for the convention. Some of the things that you may want to think about in that message is 
do you have a relationship with labor unions? That's obviously a key part of the Democratic constituency and something that those vendor contracts, they're going to be looking at. Um, have you worked with past Democratic or progressive clients that you can highlight in your messaging to local media? And then do you have a minority certification such as an LGBT certified business? Those are sort of things that, um, you know, if you're looking at Cleveland for the Republican convention, you may have a different messaging component to that. Uh, so look at the specific story you're trying to insert your voice into uh, and don't just look at uh, – your business messaging overall, but look at ways that you can craft that message um, in a specific nuanced way that may carry a, a may carry a, 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 a good impact to the audience you're trying to reach. And then the other thing we always develop with our clients is collateral or messaging material um, that provides sort of a brief overview uh, for reporters either on the business, the product that you're trying to push, or the services that you're you're rendering on behalf of your clients. Um, and this really is sort of a FAQ about your business that sets you apart. What What is the messaging and the service you provide um, or the product that you have that's different than other folks? Um, wh why should a reporter sort of uh, be interested in you? And this is kind of the proprietary messaging of your business that you want to make sure that you're that you're um, putting out there to set yourself apart from other sources that they may be coming to in this in this space. And then as Ben mentioned, you know, looking at your past reporter relationships, I mean, one of the things, one of the best places to start is with reporters you've already had a relationship with in the past. So, um, you know, if it's been a while since you've talked to those folks, create a spreadsheet, sort of put them in front of you, um, and circle back around and provide uh, sort of updated messaging to them. Let them know you're here. Ask them if they're working on any, anything in particular. Share with them your um, collateral material that's up to date. Um, find a way to sort of re-engage that conversation with them and re-engage that relationship. They also are not just um, entry points for stories they're working on, although that should be sort of the primary discussion in the relationship you're building with them. But they're also potential entry points into other um, colleagues at their media outlet that, that may be of interest to you. So, you know, if it's somebody you have a relationship with over at the Huffington Post, they may be able to steer you in a different direction about the biz small business vertical or about the green energy space vertical that they have or about the LGBT vertical. So look for ways to get into, um, into those media outlets via uh, potential past relationships with the reporters you've already established. And then the next thing I would I would uh, uh, alert you to is to look at sort of your communications infrastructure. Uh, once you engage with outreach and get a reporter's interest, you know, make sure you have a spokesperson identified and are able to fulfill the request to its entirety. So you want to make sure that you as a business um, – are ready for the outreach that, that you're doing once you get interest from a reporter. The worst mistake we see uh, with folks that we've worked with in the past is, you know, they conduct outreach to a reporter, secure that interest from the reporter, um, engage in a back and forth, and then not be able to fill the request or let the request drop through the cracks because they've gotten busy doing something else. So it's really important that somebody in your company is identified as the person to oversee this outreach so that he or she has the reporter um, uh, that has a relationship with them. The reporter has a very clear entry point into your business. They know who to reach out to to get the information they need. And then that person is tasked with responding in a timely manner um, to make sure that requests for further information or interviews um, is being, uh, being fulfilled. And then the last thing I would uh, like to talk about before I turn it over to Chris is you know, identifying key audience targets. And, and Ben talked a little bit about this, but once you know what goals you want to achieve, you start to drill down on the specific reporters and consumer audiences you uh, you wish to target. Uh, you want to make sure you have, we always do this with all of our clients, we've developed a VIP media list. And what I mean by that is the top 15 to 20 um, media contacts that are sort of the most coveted members of the media who can help best help you best reach your goal. So this may be 
a top tier media outlet. Um, it may be a Wall Street Journal reporter who covers small business, but as Ben said, it could very well be an influential blogger or trade press contact. Um, this is, this is a lot of times where, where we find it very important to have a, um, a critical strategic conversation with our clients to make sure they're aligning what their business goals are or what their organizational goals are with who they would like to um, conduct outreach to. Uh, you know, I, I get all the time from clients, uh, we want to be on Rachel Maddow. Uh, but if you really look at the demographics of who Rachel Maddow is, is sort of they're tuning into that show, you have to make sure. It's, yes, it's, it's interesting and it's cool and it's fun. Um, but media really is a currency in today's market that helps you achieve something. So make sure that you're uh, establishing that currency in a place that really helps you achieve the goals that you're wanting to wanting to uh, achieve with your business long term. So now that you have your house in order and I've identified your contacts for outreach, Chris is going to go over um, some key things to keep in mind as you start to engage directly with the media. So I'll turn it over to Chris. Great. Thanks, Brad. Um, so we've heard some really interesting things about some of the building blocks of putting a program together, and I'd like to give you um, a few more building blocks, but also give you um, some examples of how to conduct uh, some uh, media outreach activities. And I'll just remind you that whatever you do with the media and the engagement that you um, proceed with, um, it's all going to be help towards, you know, building that brand and helping with your reputation um, because it's the media and that's how it is with them. So, you know, one of the first things I want to talk about is starting small. Um, you're not going to get all the media on day one. Or you won't get all the media on day 55. So when you think about building a program, think about strategically the things that you can do um, that are specific to your business to um, engage with media. For instance, um, think about picking two or three things that are manageable for you. One, uh, starting that VIP media list. Uh, two, maybe putting out a press release announcing your business and some of the items that your business will be engaging in. And third, maybe starting small with a start launching a blog and perhaps um, advertising that in your press release that you put out. So picking some small manageable things that you can do to advance and to amplify your business um, in a strategic way is a good way to start. Um, even on day 55 or 355, you may not have a huge program um, because that doesn't make sense for a small business like yours. Um, so obviously larger corporations have a lot more resources and time, um, but you should stick um, starting in a, in a way that's very manageable for your business. Number two, I would say persistence, persistency pays off. Um, and what do I mean by that? Um, I, use, I usually have telling clients, if you don't have anything to say, no one's going to hear it. So when you have stuff to say, continue to say it over and over. So, for instance, um, we like to tell our clients, with every press release you put out, you may not get media off of it. But the point of it is to continue that drumbeat of information that that reporter or that um, influencer or thought leader hears what you have to say and continues to see that you have something to say and eventually you'll pick up on it. Um, that kind of dovetails into the next point of long-term relationship building. As they continue to see that information uh, coming through, they know that you obviously are some credible source on that. You know, for an example, I would say we're working with an organization that does, that is helping to protect LGBT refugees uh, in Syria and elsewhere in the Middle East. And, since we've been working with them, we've been putting out consistent press releases, introducing um, him and his organization to the media often, and um, ensuring they know who he is. Not every press release has been picked up, but what they do is we've seen that reporters will come back to us when we haven't put out a press release to ask us to comment on issues. For instance, um, today we got a request from a, a, an outlet that was interested in seeing what the organization had to say to um, Mr. Trump's recent comments about um, the Muslim community. So, you know, we didn't put out a press release on that issue, but we've been consistently talking about uh, the refugee process and what's going on in Syria and especially what's happening to LGBT um, persons in the Middle East. So they noticed that 
we've been commenting on it, so they've reached out to us. And that's what you want to get to, a point where people are coming to you. And, you know, that kind of dovetails into the third point of being a trusted source of information. The goal of media isn't always to get media. You want to become build that relationship with a reporter that sometimes they come to you for information, sometimes they come for a quote. Um, but you want to serve as a resource to them so that whenever they need information, you can be there for them that can turn into long-term media opportunities. Um, you know, the next point I want to talk about is being creative and looking outside the box for opportunities. Um, you know, everyone thinks a press release is the way to go uh, when you have an – you know, you have information to push out and have something to say. But it doesn't always have to be a press release. I think what Brad and I and what Ben and I have uh, done in the past when we work together on projects is we're all trying to find a creative way to get the media's attention. The media is so interested, so used to getting press releases across their inbox. When they get something a little different and something a little more creative, it kind of catches their attention, but not only does the, the vehicle catch their attention, the message that you have catches their attention. So, you know, just a couple of things that, you know, off the top of my head that, that really go speak to this point is, you know, something we think about with our clients is doing a media tour with them, whether it's at the beginning of an engagement or in the middle of an engagement or around a specific project. We like to invite me to reporters to a 45-minute sit-down or a half-hour sit-down to talk about, you know, things that our clients are doing. So you should think about doing that with your, with your local media or the industry media you work with to ask them to come meet you for coffee. You can tell them a little about who you are, uh, give them a little background information, and also, that's an opportunity for you to kind of dig a little deeper with that reporter. What are they working on? What is their interest? To see if any of the th things that, you know, align between what you're working on and what they're working on. Also, it, you know, again, it doesn't always have to be a press release. It could be an opinion editorial that you place in your local paper that if you have something to say. Um, a blog piece that you post on Huffington Post, like Brad mentioned, getting a Huffington Post account. You don't always have to do the traditional media things. Something we've done around the election is, you know, doing, um, you know, state analysis with one of our um, youth engagement clients. Instead of always putting in a press release, we think about doing some state-specific things um, to hone in on some of the state-specific numbers that we're releasing around the, around the, around the media that way. Um, that way to get their attention instead of them looking for a boring press release that may come across their inbox. You know, um, something that we're working with one of our clients, uh, a small business um, group that represents the self-employed, like many of you on the phone and um, us on the uh, us and Ben, is, you know, they developed something called the uh, NASD Minute, where it's kind of a small video about little clips of things that they're working on that we'll be able to not only insert into, like, op-ed, but also press releases, but also be able to show reporters in a more of a lively um, format um, some of the stuff they're working on, but also lends its voice to the, the larger conversation around the small business community. And then finally, I'll just say something like, you know, partnering with organizations like, you know, the NGLCC, where, we're, you know, they'll be able to um, offer you to the media and make sure you're known across um, a wide variety of associations and making sure that you do your networking so they know who to offer you if they get a call from the media. Um, you know, we, we work with, you know, I mentioned the Small Business Association. Something I would say with them is uh, they have, like, a member council, of, uh, like a, a number of small businesses around the country that if we get a media request, I really want to talk to um, a, a small business. We have a list of people that are interested in talking to the media that we can refer them to. So whether it's an MGLCC or it's a, an association for your industry or um, – you know, a, a quasi ad, ad hoc network of people, make sure you're building a network that way. And, you know, you can be creative as you want. You know, one, you know there's never a square box of how to do something in the media. Uh, we're always, us on the phone, we're always trying to come up with that new and um, innovative way to get the media's attention, um, whether it's an infographic or if it's um, a survey um, whatever we can do to support the message that we're putting out. So just try to be think out the, outside the box. Do what's manageable for your instance, for your your small business. 
but also make sure you're doing it consistently. Make sure you're creating that steady drumbeat of information where you're building that relationship with a reporter, and hopefully it'll pay off in the end. Um, so now I'll turn it over to Ben. Thanks, Chris, and I, I, hopefully we've given you all a lot to think about. Um, that's a lot of talking from the three of us. And what we'd like to do now um, is have some really good Q&A and back and forth and discussion with all of you. Um, we did uh, leave time for questions, and we tried to be really um, purposeful about making sure we'd have time to really hear from you. So we'll take as many questions as we can um, in the time we have for today. If there are any left over, um, when we run out of time, we'll, we'll be happy to follow up with you by email. Um, and if you'd rather, you know, not ask a question now because you're shy or um, you run out of time or whatever, uh, you're welcome to email us. You have our email addresses there on the screen for Brad, Christopher, and myself, uh, and you're welcome to send us a note. Uh, but for now, let's do a little Q&A. Um, so uh, if you have questions, Brent, um, I think you're going to manage the process of how we engage questions and opening mics and that kind of thing. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and just a quick note, thank you so much uh, for all of that valuable information. I hope it certainly uh, was a catalyst or the spark um, that, will, that will definitely uh, increase a lot of your, uh, your brand in media awareness uh, and hopefully get you thinking about um, your brand reputation and how you'd like to be viewed. Uh, if you have any questions, you can ask them one of two ways. We have muted most of your lines, I'm sure as, as many of you uh, probably have picked up by now, but if you could, there's a little chat function. Um, you should see three bubbles on your screen. The little chat function is in the middle. Uh, if you select that, you can write a question at all, but we prefer you to write a question uh, at host, and I don't see it on there, so if it if it doesn't show up on your screen, you can certainly do it at all, or you can email supplier diversity at nglcc.org with any questions that you have, and hopefully that will cut down on um, everyone asking questions uh, audibly at once. Uh, but while we're waiting for the first couple of questions to come in, we did have some uh, that came in a little bit earlier, uh, and this question is really for, for everyone on the call. Do you have any suggestions for um, LGBTBEs that might be participating in uh, joint ventures or partnerships um, where, you know, each LGBTBE coming to the table has their own brand and their own uh, reputation, but what does that look like when you're doing business together to an external client? Sure. This is Ben. I can start, and then Brad and Chris can, um, can jump in. Um, interesting question because we work together a lot. So, and we obviously have two different brands that, that we think about. But I think um, one of the things you have to do if you're in a joint venture is really sit down with your joint venture partners and determine uh, who's interested in really thinking about reputation management as it regards to media and who isn't. Um, all of your partners may not be in the same place at the same time as you. Um, so, you know, there may be some interest in doing some things and other interest in sort of staying silent. And you're also probably going to be in partnership with people who are at different stages of their development of their business. So some of them may have a, a stronger reputation in place already than others. You have to kind of get a level set, almost like what we talked about with the sort of audit piece. And from there, it's about being really open and transparent with your partners about what you're doing as it relates to your own business and what you're doing as it relates to the joint venture so that you're being really clear when you communicate if it relates to just you or to your role in the joint venture. Um, and that's a good starting point, and I'll, I'll stop there and let Brad and Chris talk about sort of building it out from there. Thanks, I think, Ben. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll go after. Um, yeah, I, I think just... Ben hit. I think Ben hit the nail on the head. I mean, it's really about sort of figuring out where the commonality lies with you and the joint venture and where you're sort of outside of that circle and where you're separate. I mean, obviously as your uh as a as your own as a business owner of your own business, you want to sort of know where y your wheelhouse is um and then where you're sort of stronger as a joint venture to be able to communicate your message together. The one thing I would sort of warn about um with media outreach is you can't sort of overcomplicate it with media. If if, if they sort of if you're coming at them with with two and three different uh 
titles and businesses, and they're not going to have a clear understanding of what they should be turning to um, you to be able to uh, be a source of information or to communicate a message on. So I think you want to be really clear about um, the face you're putting out there and making sure that, uh, that you're associating yourself in a pretty consistent way. Because if one day you're, you know, uh, Brad Luna, owner of Luna Eisenlaw Media, and the next day you're Brad Luna, um, member of this joint venture, uh, it, 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 it could be complicated for the media. So one of the sort of, uh, cautions I would say is make sure that you're clear and consistent with the media about, uh, what your role is and how they should be turning to you as a source. And I'll just add really briefly, uh, Brad and Ben are 100% correct. I would just add, anytime we're looking at a new venture, whether it's with Ben or with another entity, I think the thing that is most important to us is understanding what our role is and who's doing what in that venture. Because, like I said, if you get too over too overlapped and there's a little confusion over that, it's never going to be a good situation. So, um, again, I just uh, having a clear understanding of what your role is and who whatever other other people's roles are in that um, arrangement. Excellent. Thank you. Um, we did have uh, somebody ask if we could elaborate a little bit on the notification of interview willingness with the NGLCC. I think that was one of the last uh, points mentioned on the last slide. Sure. I'll, I'll get started and then have Brad and uh, Ben chime in. You know, the more – it's all about networking. The more organizations that know who you are and that you're available to talk to the media – um, whether it's on your, in your industry or as a thought leader, is, the, that is better, I think. Um, that way, you're a conduit to their relationships, and you're available to speak, um, to, to, to offer some uh, comment to a particular situation or issue. Um, so whether, you know, like I mentioned with, you know, one of our clients that has a, a, small, biz, a small business member council, we have always been able to turn to that um, when the members of the media are like, okay, great, you gave us, your organ, the association gave us some really good high-level um, stats and thoughts about how things should work and whatnot. I'd like to look at it in practicality. Do you have a member organization or a small business that can speak to their own personal experiences? Because I think they bring um, a level of um, human interest to a reporter's story. So we're able to turn to our, you know, our, our, our stable house of, you know, 10 to 15 small businesses around the country that are happy uh, to talk to the media, and they're able to uh, amplify their business that way. So, for instance, with immigration reform and the way, you know, E-Verify and whatnot, while we're able to talk about the, the practicality um, and the theoretical of how small businesses would be able to react to that, she, you know, the, the Wall Street Journal were able to talk to a small, actual small business um, who is actually implementing a program and the, the, pro, the problems and the challenges that come from that. So they were able to amplify their small business by being a par, part of this member council. So I would say as many organizations you can build relationships with and say you're available to speak to the media if the media request comes in, I think the better. And I noticed from – this is Brad – I noticed from um, Bill's follow-up question – specifically sort of concerning how you go about that. Um, I, I mean, I would sort of – there obviously uh, this varies by organization, but as Chris mentioned, in some organizations, you know, like the National Association for the Self-Employed, there is a, a formal member council you can be a part of. So look for opportunities where there is something formalized, where businesses in their surveys, um, in their membership questionnaires, um, they ask specifically on there, would you be willing to speak to the media? Um, and you can check yes. In other less formal ways, and, I, and Brent maybe could speak to the way NGLCC could handle this, but I would, I would um, suggest you be proactive about it and reach out to whoever your contact is at the organization. But before doing that, know exactly what it is that you want to talk about. So, for instance, um, you know, it may be uh, – 
your top three messaging points that we had talked about sort of developing for your business. But what happens a lot of times at these national organizations is, as Chris said, reporters will come to them for sort of high-level messaging. And then the very next question is always, do you have a member or do you have a business or do you have an actual person who's dealt with this, who's dealt with, you know, um, registering for healthcare on the exchange or who has um, hired new uh, employees and is, is managing through uh, that process or whatever it sort of is. If there's specific things that you can kind of bullet out when you reach out to your uh, organizational contact and say, listen, here are the thing. I want to let you know that we're here, we're available for media. You know, the person to contact would be, um, you know, this person. Uh, we're happy to talk about these sort of five things that I think we could uh, most uh, adequately to be able to address. If you get any requests, please keep us in mind. So be a little bit proactive about it and reaching out to your organizations, both locally, maybe it's the Capital Air Gay and Lesbian Chamber or whatever your uh, local uh, uh, chamber is, or um, all the way up to uh, national organizations like the NGLCC uh, and others. So just look at your business, look what you're, um, what you're involved in, and try to find if there's either formal ways that you can register um, that you want to be a part of, of any media outreach, or if not, be proactive in putting yourself out there. Yeah, and this is Brent. Uh, those are great suggestions, um, and, and that's exactly it. So the the opportunities sort of come to us in one of two ways. Uh, one, it might be a reporter. We may have somehow piqued a reporter's interest in some sort of advocacy or some, some new initiative that we have where they're reaching out to us and asking for specific examples. So if you've already reached out to us and said you'd be willing to, to help us out with that sort of opportunity and in, sort, in any sort of media uh, forum, you're already sort of top of mind for us. So that's one way, reporters coming directly to us. Um, but another way, too, is we are involved in a lot of different initiatives. So the most recent one, uh, as an example, would include opening up uh, statewide procurement in the state of Massachusetts, uh, in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. We, before we even began, we had our own media strategy where we wanted to include certain LGBTBEs, a certain number of LGBTBEs and those who, are who would be willing in that media campaign and in that media strategy. So we might reach out to you. So the biggest suggestion, either it's whether it's reporters coming to us or whether we're uh, planning on using LGBTBEs in an initiative, the biggest suggestion I have is be willing and be ready to talk to media. You know, have, have a baseline of, of what you'd like to communicate, and then, of course, you can sort of tweak it uh, to whatever relevant audience uh, that you're speaking to. Um, so those are all great suggestions. Uh, and along the same sort of along the same sort of line, once a business becomes certified, uh, as they're going through an or as they're attending one of our orientations, usually one of the first steps that we encourage them to do is to write a press release and reach out to their clients and customers. And I was wondering if you might be able to uh, suggest uh, do they do they include you know how much do you include that you're a certified LGBTBE in your brand identity whenever you're reaching out to media, or does it really depend on who you're reaching out to and who you're trying to, to communicate that to? This, this is Ben. I can, oh, go ahead. You go first. Okay. Just briefly, and I'll turn it over to Ben and Brad. Um, I think it really depends. I mean, it's, it's definitely part of the business you are, but I think about, you know, in, in the bios that we write and whatnot, um, it's part of part of who we are, but it's not everything of who we are because we work with a very re large um, scope of um, different types of clients and organizations, um, and we try to ensure that we include it in who we are, um, and it's definitely in our bios and the, the work that we've done, and we're not shy from it, and it, it's, it's we try to ensure that it's part of um, – the brand of who we are, but not over, over too much. Because I think what we found with, 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 with people that you really want your, you may be an, an LGBT um, certified business, but you also have expertise that is really what you want to sell to your reporters. Um, 
if, if that, that helps. And again, like if you're reaching out on a story that is about LGBT um, organizations and whatnot, then maybe that's what you need to lead with. I think it really depends on the issue and the reporter. Ben? Yes, completely agree. And the one thing I would add is when you think about um, writing a press release about your own business and sort of what to say and what to include in that, um, how you include your LGBTDE really should go back to why you decided you wanted to be certified in the first place. You probably decided you wanted to be certified because you saw it as a as a way to um, create an advantage for yourself in building business or a way to set yourself apart from your competitors in the marketplace you're in or a way to be unique and different in your you know, local geographic community. Whatever those reasons were that led you to seek certification should drive how you talk about yourself in your press release and what you say when. And then the next piece is what Chris said, which is what audience are you talking to? So if you're talking to a local business reporter about business issues and trying to position yourself or, or targeting, if you haven't talked to the reporter yet, but you're targeting that reporter because you really want to be seen as a local, you know, influential business leader who has started a small business and has really contributed to the community. The fact that you're an LGBTDE is probably really interesting and really relevant because it, it sort of adds to your credibility, but it also is an interesting other additional fact about who you are and what your experience is. If you're talking to a reporter about something else entirely um, that really has nothing to do with your business or, you know, with your orientation or your gender identity, then maybe that doesn't have to be front and center. Um, it's something you mentioned, but it isn't like a highlight, a priority. I have my um, certification highlighted on my website on one of the sections about myself. I have a little paragraph that describes it. And then I also have the certification logo on every page of my website in the header so that it's right there up top and, you know, you can click on it and go to the NHLCC website and read more about it, et cetera. And I was very intentional about that because I wanted to kind of set myself apart in terms of the kind of business that I run and, and who I am as a person. And I think that's a unique fact about me that not everybody has, although we do hope that more people get certified. So I guess the number will increase. But it really is thinking about those kinds of criteria and those those reasons when you decide um, how and to what degree to um, describe your certification and your involvement. Fantastic. Awesome. Um, we just had somebody email us in, how do you go about identifying key media outlets? How do you identify which media outlets uh, are most suitable for your business? I could jump off on that one. This is Brad. Uh, as we sort of talked about in the in the building blocks phase of, of the development, really think about you know, I, I think you sort of want to step back and, and try to get out of your sort of business, take off your business glasses and put on kind of the consumer glass or the audience glasses of who you're trying to reach. Um, so I'll, I'll give you an example of this. And we had a, a, a client that was several years ago was the AARP of young people. It's basically an advocacy organization for um, for those young Americans under the age of 35. And um, we were constantly getting them on cable news. But we sort of stepped back and realized um, that it was great that they were, you know, they got on their, on MSNBC, they were on there once a week and um, had a great relationship. But the fact is, is that um, 18, 18, 19, 20, 25 year olds aren't watching cable news during the day. Um, so although they were getting a lot of media, and uh, getting a lot of exposure, they were getting a lot of exposure to people that weren't in the subset of the demographic that they were trying to reach. So really what we did is shifted that communications campaign to more of a aggressive online Facebook social media campaign, which was um, reaching the audience that they wanted to reach. So one of the things I would sort of say in the very beginning is, you know, look at it from, as Ben talked about, the larger goal of what you're wanting to try to do as a business. Is it try to, are you wanting to try to increase your customer base? Um, are you wanting to try to break into a new geographic market? Uh, are you wanting to try to have a larger voice inside your industry and trade? Uh, so look at, look at what the goal is and then try to match that goal to the audience. Um, that would help you most uh, uh, achieve that goal and then sort of work yourself back from there and think about the outlet that uh, that would be um, 
most relevant for you to to be appearing in to try to reach that goal. So, you know, I mentioned in my example, if it's the Democratic Convention and trying to get the eye of stakeholders that are making the decisions in the Philadelphia media market, um, you know, that you you want to you want to be looking for media outlets that are that are uh, based in Philadelphia, like the Philadelphia Inquirer, you don't want to be in the Dallas Morning News um, because it's not going to – the eyeballs uh, that you want to reach aren't going to be uh, reading the Dallas Morning News as likely as they are the the Philadelphia Inquirer. So identify what your goal is as a a business. Um, look Look at what the audience that you want to try to reach and then sort of work yourself back from there. And I would just type in and say, after you figure out what audience or what geographic area, just from a pure tactical perspective, there's very different ways to build your media list and identify reporters. You can do this simply as using Google online um, to figure out who the right reporters are, um, all the way to buy, you know purchasing a, a very sophisticated um, reporter database system that will help you do that as well. You know, for folks that can't do something like that, you know, if you're building a geographical list in, let's say, Kansas City, it's very easy just to go on Google and Google Kansas City media outlets. You know, you have three to four usually um, network stations, ABC, CBS, and they usually on their website all have a uh, news desk at abc.com or whatever. Um, you also know, you know, for the, if it's the Kansas City Star, they usually have the reporters um, based uh, an email on the website as well. So you could put uh, together a very manageable media list that you would email your reporters to um, your stuff as well. But if you're like more of a national organization that want to play in like the national conversation around immigration or a small business or something, you know, it, it's you can also do something similar in trying to identify the right reporters via, the, via um, Google and um, to build your media list that way. And this is Ben. I'll just add one other thought to those excellent ideas. Going back to one of the things Chris said earlier around starting small, um, depending on the size of your business and, and how much time you have to really spend on media outreach, it might make sense to think about um, one or two specific reporters that you really care about. So most cities have a business journal, um, and the National Business Journal Network is pretty strong. And, for example, the Washington Business Journal is, is one of their larger papers and you know, very engaged in the community. They have all kinds of reporters who cover all kinds of business issues, everything from uh, a new franchise going in here to um, a new company hiring this person, et cetera. Those are good reporters uh, to get to know. Um, and then, you know, there's all kinds of other reporters that publications large and small or outlets large and small, you know, online, offline, and it might be interesting to think about, you know, going back to the points that Chris made and Brad made about sort of what your objectives are. If you're really thinking about this, you know, ultimately to sell product, well, great. Most people sort of think about, you know, media relations in that term. But if you step back one piece and really think about this from the standpoint of how am I going to build my reputation so that it impacts all those different things, then it becomes a question of, well, what do I want to be known for, as, as you heard from Chris and Brad? Well, I want to be seen as a smart business person who has a really good take on how to build a business or how to run a business or just um, what the pulse of small business in my town or my city is. That's a different place to start, and you can think about talking to reporters who may be covering those kinds of local angles and sort of coming to them and introducing yourself and getting to know them and building a relationship with them based on that perspective as well, so that you sort of start small in building that relationship and building an expertise for who you are as a business person and what you contribute to your community, as opposed to just the issues. So there's lots of different angles, and as Chris and Brad said, it really depends on what you're trying to accomplish and what you have to work with to get there. All right, fantastic. Well, thank you, everyone. It looks like we are uh, out of time at this point. Um, Thank you, a huge thank you to Brad, Chris, and Ben for all of this amazing information. Um, For those of you still on the call, if you wanted to revisit, we will have this posted on our website. It will be embedded through YouTube, uh, hopefully in the next week or less. Um, So stay tuned. If if you do have any questions, again, uh, please feel free to email Brad, Chris, Ben, uh, or if you feel more comfortable emailing me, either directly to me or suppliersdiversity at nglcc.org, I will be happy to pass uh, your question along to them and we'll make sure to get the answers to the questions that you have. Um, But thanks for joining. Uh, We really appreciate it and have a great afternoon. Mm